Viewer discretion is advised. That was a lot of fun. Crown Vic is doing great. Freaking love that car. I really love that car. It's it's kind of surprising, actually. I mean, I look at that car and I go, man, I never thought I would own something like that. Like, I look at it and I think that it's like, oh, God, I get to drive that? Like, it's just, it's one of those photos that before I got my very first Crown Vic, I would look at photos of Crown Vics and I was like, man, that's a clean looking Crown Vic. I'll never own something like that. And now I kind of feel like I do, and it's just, it's surreal. It really is. I just look at it and go, wow, that is just, that is nuts that I get to drive that, and that's mine. So the Crown Vic's doing really well, very strong. It needs, uh, needs a, little, a couple little, you know, mechanical repairs here and there. Nothing crazy important. It is important, but it's not anything that's like, oh my god, you need to get this done. Uh... Windows are tinted. Loving driving a car with window tint again. Ugh, there's no other way of driving a car. I will. I hate owning cars that don't have window tint. I mean, unless it's like a convertible. Like the Miata, eh, the windows are always down anyway. And if they are up, it's raining. And that's it. I mean, I roll those things down if it's too hot. I roll them down if it's too cold. I Those windows are always down. Uh, the only thing that I would... I would still like to tint them, actually... But I would really like to tent the hard top. I have a hard top on it, and it helps you know keep keep the outside out and the inside in. And the car so low, it has this. The hard top is a huge rear window, and the car is so low. I'd love to get limo tent on the back. That way, all the headlights at night won't be right in my mirror, you know. And then at the same time, it's just not you know during the day, it's not as hot and whatnot. So the Miata will eventually get window tent. It's just. That it's it's a project car, you know. I, I put a little money into it here and there, and just kind of, you know, tinker around with it and mess around with it. And it's just my fun little project car. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to happen to it. Whoop! Driving off the road. There's a lot of stuff that's going to happen to it that I'm just, you know, will happen eventually. So I'm not too concerned about it. But I gotta work this uh, this fix it ticket out with the uh, the Crown Vic. I um. I, I mean, as you guys know, I got the ticket for driving the, the Crown Vic black and white. And I got the ticket written off. I went into the CHP and had them inspect the vehicle. And they said, yeah, it's all good. You know, he signed the ticket, everything. And I asked him, I was like, so what's what, what's going to happen now? You know, what's the next process? He said, more, more than likely, you'll go in, you'll show them that it's signed, and then they'll pay a $25 processing fee, and they'll, you know, pretty much throw out the ticket. I said, okay, that's fine. You know, that's that's not the 25 bucks, whatever. That's not that big of a deal. So then I get this thing in the mail saying, oh, well, you've got to pay uh, $197 on or before September 8th. And I'm thinking, what? Why? Why am I having to pay money for this? It's a fix-it ticket. A fix-it ticket is this is broke. You fix it. You have proof that it's fixed i.e. someone signing off like CHP saying yeah it's fixed and then m the most you pay is a processing fee and they throw it out or they get rid of it and they go okay everything's fine so I'm not sure why I'm getting this letter saying I'm having to pay $197 um yeah so I don't know what's going on there so I'm gonna have to go into the courthouse at some point I'm probably gonna try to do it this week if I can get ahead on some videos and uh, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna say so what's what's up <laughs> what's going on you know can you can you help me out with this so you know I I, I don't know I gotta see what's happening and uh, go from there I try to look it up online online didn't really help they kind of just said yeah you got to pay that and uh, it's weird because so I got the ticket on like June twelfth or tenth or somewhere around like the tenth to twelfth area of June, and they gave me sixty days to fix it. So I have a court date on August twelfth is what the initial thing said. You know, court date August twelfth, and you can, you know, go to court and do whatever you got to do. I'm not trying to fight the ticket. 
you know, I know that what I was doing was a, you know, it was a ticketable offense. It was a fix it ticket. And that's what I did. I fixed it. So why would they need money from me now? So I don't know. I got to figure it out. It's just the state of California trying to jam everybody for the littlest amount of money. It's freaking unbelievable, but whatever. So I got to figure that out. Once that's figured out, then I can get out of this whole situation of just this stupid, stupid fix it tickets are so stupid. They're the stupidest thing. If I ever became a cop, I would not. Oh, this is for California. I know where you live. It's going to be different, but I would not pull somebody over if they didn't have a front plate and if they had tinted windows. That is the stupidest. Unless they were driving like a complete asshole, then I would pull them over and that would be another thing that I would tack on to it depending on how much of an asshole they would be. And I get that like, you know, cops see someone with tinted windows or no front plate and that's that's their probable cause. Boom. I'm going to pull this guy over. I got a feeling about him. Like, you know, they're going to check your information, make sure your license is invalid, you know, your your registration's good, you're, you're insured and all that, you know, just, they're gonna, they're, they want, it's just a thing to lead to something bigger. So they want you to have, like, your plate off so they can see if, oh, maybe he has an expired license or maybe he's not insured. So it's just a thing that they just, it's, it's, it's an escalation thing. But once they find out that you're all clean, they should just say, all right, have a good one. See you later not give you tickets for not having a front plate or tinted windows or something. Fix it tickets are the stupidest things because if you actually think about what it is, it's saying, okay, your vehicle is not up to code. So you need now to fix this. Now imagine, you know, I'm not really struggling. I'm not struggling to get by. You know, I'm not, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of people out there that are a lot worse off than I am. Trust me. I mean, it's, you know, people are barely getting by. So imagine that person that maybe bought a car, you know, a, a used car, or someone gave them a car, something that had window 10 on it, or, or didn't come from the factory with a front plate. A lot of vehicles in the mid-2000s don't have front plates. And it's like, so you're just aftermarket, got to put one on there. So that you don't always see cars with front plates and whatnot. So, you know, you... Uh, you get pulled over for that, then you get a fix it ticket. Okay, so now you gotta fix that. And to fix that, more than likely, you're gonna have to spend money. Money that you don't have. So then on top of spending money that you don't, you didn't budget for, you then have to get that fixed. And if you don't, you gotta go in and you probably gotta pay another fee or get it extended. And then you have this, this fix it ticket hanging over you. And then you gotta, you gotta keep spending money to try to get this thing fixed. And worst case scenario, you don't get it fixed. You can't get it signed off. You can't go into court and say that you got it fixed. And then what happens? You get a warrant for your arrest over a fix it ticket. That is freaking unbelievable. Way to make someone that doesn't like, if someone doesn't have the funds to get something, a little thing fixed, it, uh, it's just ridiculous. You know, like, they suggested, when I got pulled over, they suggested, oh, we'll just go buy some black spray paint or something and paint the doors. You know how much spray paint is? Do you know how much spray paint that would have... That would have been a, a decent amount of money for spray paint. And it would have looked like shit, but that's not, they, that's not their concern. But that would have been a decent amount of money for spray paint. Uh, yeah, that's still a good amount of money that I didn't have budgeted out. So, if someone was worse off why it's just it's just it's like a racket it's just the stupidest thing it's like you know what if i'm speeding if i'm endangering people fine give me a ticket then i'll pay that's uh, whatever if i run stop signs or red lights or you know anything anything that's like an actual violation that is endangering people sure that's perfectly fine but if someone has a freaking missing a front plate or window tint or it's just it's like what is that accomplishing who, who am I hurting by having window 10 on my car? Nobody. Who am I hurting by not having a front plate? Nobody. So why is it a big deal if you pull me over for that and you find out that I'm, I have a valid license, my car is registered, I 
I am insured, everything's clean. So then what? Why is it then the next process you're going to get a fix-it ticket? That's just the stupidest thing. I don't know. It's just a money generating thing. They got to squeeze people for that $25 processing fee. State of California really got to get that $25. Or this $200 random fee for just zero reason, which if I find out that I do have to pay, I'm going to be pretty angry. So, I don't know. I just find it stupid. Not not to go off on a tangent, which I just totally did. I just find it stupid. I mean, it's just it's such a little bullshit reason. So, I don't know. But if I was a cop, I would not pull somebody over for petty shit like that. I'd pull somebody over for doing something stupid. <laughs> Speeding, that's kind of doing something stupid. So, I don't know. Just my two cents on it, really. Oh, man. That was not that was not a tangent that I was trying to go off on, but it was just something that I, I kind of just had to vent about it. I think it's kind of stupid. Like, who was I hurting by having a black and white car? Yeah, I didn't want it black and white. I wanted to get it fixed, but I wanted to get it fixed on my own terms when I saved up enough money. Not to be like, well, shit, now I have an actual deadline to get this shit done. So... Like, who was I actually hurting? Nobody. And that cop literally said to me, oh, I didn't even know that was a law until I saw it the other day, and I, I don't know, once I saw it, I thought, well, I have to use this on somebody. Really? You have to use this on somebody? Now I'm going through all this bullshit of, like, finding out what the fuck to do, and it's never clear. It's never like, yeah, this is exactly what you do. It's always like, well, you gotta come in, but not really, but if you want to give us money, you don't have to, but if you don't, then you gotta come in, you gotta... It's like, what the fuck? I should just be able to take a snapshot of my ticket signed off and go, Here, you fuckers. <laughs> take a snapshot of my car, the cop signing the ticket, the ticket signed, and me and the cop next to each other and go, There, that's enough proof that it happened, so go away. I don't know. It's stupid. Anyway, how's your day going? <laughs> oh, man. I can't wait for summer to end. Let's get on another tangent. I can't wait for summer to end. I can't. I hate the heat. <laughs> it's just, it's too damn hot. You know what? It's actually been, it's been better these past couple days. It's actually been pretty reasonable. Uh, well, no, the other day when I was working on the Miata, it was damn hot. If you were in the sun, it was hot. If you were in the shade, it was fine. It was one of those days where shade, you're like, I can totally tolerate this. And then you stand in the sun, you're like, no. So I just want the sun. I just want the winter. I want winter. I like the winter. I like, you know, walking outside and seeing my breath. And I know I'm a Californian. I get California winters, and California winters are nothing. I totally understand that. But I like California winters. That is perfect temperature for me. I don't get inconvenienced by snow. I still have, you know, well, it's not going to rain in California because of the drought. So that's not an issue. It's not going to rain. I can still put my top down on my Miata in the middle of winter. Um, which I did. I remember driving on Christmas Eve with the top down last year on the Miata. Like, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, I'm not inconvenienced by, like, weather at any sort of stretch of the means. It's just all pure temperature, which I love because I love cold. I like being cold. I prefer being cold. I would take cold over hot any day, and I think a lot of you know that because I've probably mentioned that a million times. But I just can't wait for that California winter to come back where I can walk outside and I can see my breath and, you know, you can take that deep breath of cold air and it just feels like it fills your entire lung cavity compared to these, this heat where you walk outside and you're like, <sighs> because it's just so freaking hot and humid. You're just like, I don't like this at all. And you can't breathe, and you're, you're outside for 12 seconds, and you're already sweating through all your clothes, and you're like, this is just great. And then you're grumpy, and you're like, just don't want to do anything anymore. And you're exhausted because, you know, God forbid it's not... God forbid it's not exhausting. So, winter. Bring back. Come back. <sighs> it's time. It's time to come back. Uh, I literally count... I count down the days until summer ends and then I count 
however many days I have of winter because that's I'm just like okay only th this many more days till summer ends and I get my winter back because in California I mean yeah we have spring and fall but it's like it's hot or it's cold we don't really get like a middle ground really so I'd much prefer the cold over the heat can't wait <sighs> also this September is going to be freaking sweet for video games. I don't know if you guys know what's coming out, but just a ton of amazing stuff, and I'm freaking excited. If you're not excited for this September, then you need to you need to Google what games are coming out, because my god, it's a lot. Okay, we are here. That actually didn't take bad, you know? A couple random tangents later, and uh, we're all good. Okay drop off this uh, 24 tons of diesel preferably by not hitting anything in here because this place seems like uh, this place seems like it would be explosive <laughs> I don't know why I would get that thought but it just does not hit this trailer either okay I'm gonna kind of try to get my truck angled over here. I'm unfortunately, I might have to back it in blind. I just kind of accomplished nothing by doing what I just did. But yeah, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to back it in blind just because of the way it is. I'd rather not do that, but kind of don't have much of a choice. At least I can get it in the general area first and then I can kind of do my positioning on the proper side god that mirror sucks god that mirror is so shit that sun doesn't help I think we're doing pretty good though nah we're actually doing pretty shit <laughs> well we're not hitting anything so that's good enough for me really but let's kind of get this trailer over where it belongs. I want to kind of pay attention to what's in front of me so I don't blow this thing up. Nope. Wrong way. There we go. There we go. There we go. We got this. I love the new Scandinavia DLC drop-offs. It makes me so excited for American Truck Sim. I think the drop-offs are going to be freaking sweet. Okay. We're going to go a little bit past. We can go a little forward. Right there. I'm happy with that. Look at that. All right. Go into neutral. Put the parking brake. Shut those. Nope. Shut this off. Turn the truck off. And drop the trailer. So, we went 590 kilometers, took us 13, pretty much 14 hours. We consumed 239 liters of fuel. We got 28,000 euro and 905 XP. Getting pretty close. We're just under 900 XP left to get into that next level, which is going to be pretty nice. But, uh, yeah, I would say that's a pretty successful run. One little incident with an idiot that didn't want to, I don't know, didn't realize that I was coming over or something. I don't know what his deal was, but I don't know. Not my problem, <laughs> or his. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys will join me for the next installment of Euro Truck, which would be kind of random. I don't know. I do them like every other week. So I don't know. Again, if you guys like this series, remember to hit that like button. It definitely lets me know that you guys want to see more. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. Bye.